Hi, I would like to tell you something about a new diagnosis in the International Classification of Diseases, version number 11. The new diagnosis is called prolonged grief disorder. Let me begin with some history. In recent time, persons who had a loss, had a bereavement and suffered a lot were diagnosed with depression. Actually, the loss of a loved one had been a classic example for a developing a depression. But now we know that this is not all depression what comes after a highly stressful event in life. And Zeus already post-traumatic stress disorder had been kind of of taken out of the larger body of depressive disorders, acute stress disorder had been taken out of this body, and the most recent diagnosis, which comes out of a part of people formerly all called depressed persons, is now prolonged grief disorder, or as you already see, uh, abbreviated as CG or complicated grief, which, lead, which leads me to an extended list of other labels of the same kind of disorder. In previous times, some authors, including Sigmund Freud, uh, called it pathological grief. There were terms like disordered grief, morbid grief, chronic grief, traumatic grief, and complicated grief. The, in parallel, um, the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders of the American Psych Psychiatric Association, DSM-5, calls this disorder persistent complicated bereavement disorder, but it's not an official diagnosis in DSM-5. DSM-5, it's a diagnosis waiting for further research. Our committee at WHO was convinced that the it is now time to um, officialize the new diagnosis of prolonged grief disorder for different reasons. Because for a long time, there are clinical observations that several of the persons who suffer from the consequences of bereavement suffer very much. In, partic in, uh, in particular, this, the consolation could be the death of one's own child, a sudden death of a loved one, or no farewell uh, at the death of the loved one. And some people grieve in an extreme or prolonged manner, which is a clinical reason to coining the new diagnosis. And from psychopathology and from a, from a myriad of studies, we know that there are symptom, different symptoms in the two conditions of depression and prolonged grief disorder. Depression can be caused still today by bereavement. Then it has the typical symptom pattern of dep in depressive disorder. In prolonged grief disorder, there is another uh, symptom pattern which I would like to explain in a minute. There was an additional reason for WHO to um, officialize the new diagnosis. This was the study, the survey study with more than 3,000 practitioners around the world who uh, should mention the most absent diagnosis, the missing diagnosis they feel in the international classification systems. And a condition called somehow pathological grief or bereavement was mentioned very often 
in these accounts of these international participants. Therefore, ICD-11 decided to consider it more serious and together with clinical and scientific evidence, it decided to include it into ICD-11. What is the definition of prolonged grief disorder? First, that this disorder can develop, may develop in, in um, the following period to a death of a partner, parent, child, or other persons close to the bereaved. And then there is a particular symptom pattern, beginning with longing for the deceased, or persistent preoccupation with the deceased, and in addition, accompanied by intensive emotional pain for a long time. For example, sadness, guilt, anger, denial, blame, difficulty in accepting the death, feeling one has lost a part of oneself, an ability to experience positive, an inability to experience positive mood and others. The time for diagnosis, diagnosing this um, disorder has been at a minimum six months, meaning that in the period between the loss and six months, the diagnosis is not appropriate because uh, one, it is not to distinguish between what experts call normal bereavement, normal mourning processes and a prolonged or a complicated bereavement. Very important um, for this disorder and its diagnosis is the um, condition that it has to clearly exceed expected social, cultural and religious norms. I'll get back to it in a minute. In addition, this diagnosis can only be given in case of significant impairment in personal, family, occupational, and other important areas of functioning. One has to say that grief reactions that have persisted for longer periods that are within a normative period of grieving, given the person's cultural and religious context, are viewed as normal bereavement responses and are not assigned a diagnosis. I should mention here that the term PGD as a diagnosis exists for a little longer. For example, from 2009, um, published in a landmark paper by Holly Priggerson and colleagues. But the diagnostic algorithm I'm, I'd like to show you is much more complex and extensive. It has some similarities. The event is similarly uh, defined. Yearning is the first symptom in the symptom list to diagnose. But then there is a diagnostic algorithm to assess nine potential symptoms and five of it have to be uh, present. Only then in this case of five present symptoms, the diagnosis can be given. And some Examples are confusion about one's role in life, difficulty accepting the loss, avoidance of reminders of the reality of the loss. WHO and its committee on ICD-11 decided to have a more precise and briefer, brief uh, symptom list for a higher clinical utility around the world because this symptom list is probably too extensive. I'd like to mention that 
there are other losses, important losses in, in one's life. And this, that these losses may create a uh, suffering state or disorder. For example, after divorce, after a disappearing, disappearance of a loved one, following an illness or disability, the death of pets, or important social economic losses. In this case, not prolonged grief disorder would be the diagnosis, but if, um, if existent, then the another diagnosis, adjustment disorder, would be the proper one. And you see here the symptom features or the definition of the diagnosis beginning with um, the event criterion, it's a reaction to an identifiable psychosocial stressor. Then there are three symptom groups, preoccupation with the stressor or its consequences, constant ruminations about its implications, and failure to adapt symptoms, which are in itself a collection of different single symptoms like chronic sleep problems or concentration problems. And again, as always in the mental health chapter of ICD-11, there had to be significant impairments in functioning of the concerned person. I'd like to come back to the very important point of the impact of culture on diagnosing prolonged grief disorder. Um, I cite again, uh, ICD-11 says, only if clearly, if the condition clearly exceeds expected social, cultural, or religious norms for the individual's culture and context. Meaning that grief, prolonged grief, may look different in different cultures. Some with more emotional expressions, some with much less emotional expressions, and many other um, modifications. There's a possibility in ICD that national adaptations may include different um, statements about prolonged grief disorder and its, for example, its time feature. These national adaptations are existent in China, in Korea, in Brazil, in Russia, in Sweden, in Germany, just to name a few. And for the Europeans, it could be very well conceived that the European um, editions or the new European national adapt adoptions of ICD-11 will have um, a different time criterion because in uh, European countries of Christian background, uh, the mourning year, one year of mourning is typical and therefore, it could well be, it's dependent on the decisions of the national ICD committees, that they say for a European background patient, the minimum requirement for uh, the diagnosis should be one year. Only afterwards, the diagnosis can be given. Important is also the differential diagnosis, as I already explained that in the past, um, depressive disorders were the most common diagnosis after a bereavement. And what are some features uh, which distinguish between PGD and depressive disorders? In PGD, longing or yearning is in the center of the symptoms which is not the case in, the, in people who have a depression following a bereavement. In PGD, there is often the feeling of an incomplete self. Something is taken out of my heart, of my person, which is not the case in depressive disorders, where a stable negative self-image is existent. And last but not least, PGD had been shown to be 
non-responsive to antidepressive drugs. But in the case of a bereavement-related depression, they are responsive to antidepressive drugs. My last few words are about provisional treatment recommendations. Provisional since no body of experts in the world already dis discussed or decided about these treatment recommendations. But a review on the existing literature shows that a grief-specific psychotherapy has proven in various variants effective for prolonged grief disorder. Therefore, there are already means to successfully treat persons who have this condition. And I'd like to compare it to bereavement-related depression, where still other kinds of psychotherapy, namely antidepressive psychotherapy, sometimes in combination with drugs, depending on the degree of severity, is recommended. Thank you for your interest.